Welcome to a very special edition of TFL Talking Trucks podcast because I'm in California in SoCal at Eric's place. Eric, thanks for having me here. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys for coming out. Yes, uh, thank you. And um, this is all about Cybertruck ownership. Okay. <laughs> we, I've been wanting to, we've been wanting to do a lot more you know, testing and coverage of the Cybertruck and finally we're able to thanks to you. So you purchased your Tesla Cybertruck, what, about nine days ago? I took delivery last Tuesday. So yes. yes. So it's almost nine days ago. So it's your new owner, but you're not new to Teslas no. and you're also not new to trucks. No, no. So, yeah. So I, I had a 2018 Model 3, uh, currently have a Model S. I have a Ram 3500 with the Cummings diesel. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you, you know, you, you, have a, you have a business, you move stuff around, you yep. have a trailer. Yep. So, so let me know. First, so on this podcast, I want to get to the bottom of like your first experience, you know, your good and bad, right, with the Cybertruck. Okay. But also, let's start with, you know, why did you get the Cybertruck in the first place? Well, I love Tesla technology, okay? It doesn't even need to be Tesla, but just the technology that cars and trucks are moving to. Um, and yet, I like the utility of having a truck, like you said, moving things around, hauling, towing. We do a lot of camping with our travel trailer. And so having a truck is a necessity for us, for my family. And then, you know, doing some stuff, business stuff, you know, taking um, pallets and delivering it to customers. So when I saw the Cybertruck, it's one of those things where uh, initially I didn't like the design when I first saw the presentation. I still pre-ordered that. This was four night. years ago. Yeah, right? four years ago. Yeah. When I first seen the presentation, I didn't like it in initially, but I still made the pre-order because, you know, it's refundable. Yeah. Um, but the more and more I saw it, I fell in love with it. And, you know, I love having a truck. I love, love having the size, um, but I wanted the fancy features. You know? Okay. And I see now you changed the color on it I did. already. Yeah, I did. So it comes, of course, in stainless steel. And I have some stainless steel appliances in my house, in my kitchen. So my fridge is stainless steel, my dishwasher is too, and my stove, and always fingerprints, right? Yes, yes. So I was really worried about this, but this seems to be solving that issue. That is the number one reason why I did it, was because I had the truck for like 22 hours before I went and dropped it off. And in those 22 hours, there's fingerprints all over it. And so... I decided I'm going to get it wrapped, but I didn't want to lose the metal look. You know, I still wanted something that looked industrial, something um, that kept that, that look that Tesla was going for. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, this worked out really well. No, thank you. Yeah. So, and by the way, so you do have your channel and also Instagram yes. right there. So yep. you're going to be making, like, as you, you know, as you live with this truck, you're going to be making a lot more videos, yes. right? Yes, yes. And then the main point of my channel is just to show what the truck can do as a truck. Um, you know, I want to tow with it. I want to haul with it. Um, I just want to get it dirty and, and see what its capabilities are. So you did a little bit of towing already, yes, right? Yes. So we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, but you haven't gone off-road with it yet? No, I have okay. not. So, but you've driven it around town, so you have pretty good um, experience. Well, let's kind of climb around it. Let's open the frunk first. Okay. And just kind of go from front to back. First Tesla with the button on the front of the vehicle for the frunk. So yes. that's, that's handy. And also the first Tesla without any Tesla badging. Yes, yes. <laughs> But there is a little bit of Cybertruck badging. So uh -huh. inside the frunk, there's a little Cybertruck logo. But on the outside, there's really no other symbols. It yeah. is what it is. You, you immediately know it's a Cybertruck because mm -hmm. the way it looks. Or you uh, don't and you just go, oh, that thing's crazy. Yeah, you're like, what is that? <laughs> Did you just build it in your, I don't know, yeah, exactly. in your warehouse or yeah, something? Yeah, but most people do know. Yeah, that's, they, they'll stop me on the road and go, is that the Tesla truck? Yeah, that's the Tesla yeah. truck. So what do you think about this frunk? Is it useful? Is it not useful? Is it small? Is it big? I'm going to be honest. I know I've seen people on different platforms talk about how they use their frunk for everything. Um, Model 3, Model S, I hardly use it. Okay. Um, 
Here on this truck, what I am using it, as you can see, is my chair. Okay. My kids play sports. We're always at a park, at soccer games, or you know, at different uh, sporting events. So having chairs here easily accessible is, is extremely helpful. And so I'm going to use it for that reason, and this chair wouldn't fit in a Model S frunk or a Model 3 Because it's not like wide enough. Exactly. Yeah. So this, this is great. You know, in my Ram, I have it in the back, and it fumbles around, and it's, it's rolling all over the place. Uh -huh. And right here, it's, it stays put, and it's easily accessible. Awesome. So that's pretty nice. And you can kind of see some of the metal here. Yes. Um, and uh, the, But this is not, I was talking about my kitchen. I was kind of joking, right? Mm -hmm. Because the actual alloy of steel that they're using is special to the Cybertruck. So yes. uh, we're not going to be shooting guns at it today. Not today. Are, are we? Okay. Maybe not we're, today. We're, we're not. <laughs> we're not shooting guns at it today, and we're not kicking it either. But, okay. but it's a tough material, right? Yes, yes. I, mean, I, I have of, kicked it, though. You have kicked it. I've kicked it. Where have you kicked it? On the door, on the, on the on driver the, door. On the driver's side? Yes, I kicked I, it. I don't see any uh, dents or anything. No, no. Okay. No, it did not even, didn't move at didn't, all. Didn't budge? No, not at all. Did you try throwing any steel balls at it? Or I anything? have not done okay. that, no. Okay. No, that let's. <laughs> we're not going to do that either. No. Okay. Um, let's talk about the wheels and tires. Do Do you like the style overall? And you know what? The hubcaps. Yeah. You know what? It, initially, once again, I wasn't in love with it, but it it's it's the look, right? It's what. It's part of it. It's part of the look, yeah. and I think especially with this black wrap, I like it even more. Because it kind of makes it like a holistic look, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I like it. I enjoy it. That's cool. Somebody is shooting something. Somebody is shooting something. All right. Let's, <laughs> have you used There's a, a shooting ranger right around the corner. Has he used, have you used the bed much? I know you did a payload test. I did the payload test. I've also loaded in um, a little over 1,400 pounds and did a delivery about 20 miles away. Uh, shot a video for that as well. Okay. Um, yeah. So I've put stuff back there, and I intend to continue to do that. So what? What about? Um, can you open the tunnel uh, all the way? So yeah. the tunnel cover is powered. Yes. What do you What do you think about the whole design of the, of the tunnel cover, etc.? I love it. Okay. I have a tunnel on my uh, Ram. You know, it's it's a vinyl. Um, you know, it flaps around, yeah. and it, it's, you know, you got to roll it up manually and, un, and unroll it yeah. when you're done with it. This, I love it. And I even made a little YouTube short because the sound of it, for whatever reason, yeah. is so satisfying for me. It's kind of like metallic. I just like the way it's Metallic it sound. Yeah. Sweet. You know what we should do together? We should plug some things into the truck and try to power some things. Yeah. Yeah, let's do so it. So it has the outlet in the bed on the, on the driver's side, mm -hmm. so 120 volt system and also 240. Yes. Yep. Um, so you can power some big things, maybe even uh, your camping trailer. That's one, the one thing I want to do. I want to plug in my trailer and, and see how that handles it. So when you put your pallet in there, yes. how'd you tie it down? Did you use some of the, some of the tie downs here? So So that was something I mentioned in my video. So when I put in the pallet, I was able to leave some of the rings that are in the bed, the floor of the bed, uh -huh. exposed, but it was still covering the other side. So if you have a wider load, you don't have access to those. Uh, luckily, Tesla gives you the um, corner rings, which work well. And I was concerned that these on the, on the track yeah. were going to be too small for heavy d duty. Um, like hooks and stuff? Yeah. Uh -huh. But it... My hooks were able to fit in there just fine, and, and so I tied down at the, in the corners is what, what I did. Well, it seems like, I mean, they give you, what, four in the floor, four in each corner, so that's eight. Yes. Plus the utility track. Yep. That's a lot of options. It is a lot of options. And a bottle opener? And a bottle opener. <laughs> so we, we can always pop something open later if you want. Okay. We <laughs> may, may have to. Yeah. Um, and then the little storage compartment. What, what do you think about this guy? I, I like it. I like it. I know... People are excited for um, that they're going to use it as an ice chest and all that. I, I'm not interested in that. What, what I want to use it for is for um, straps and just keeping all that stuff organized. Yeah. All the things that I use for hauling or towing, tools, keep them in there. They're out of the way, and um, I always know where they're at. 
Yeah, that's cool. Because, like you said, in a normal pickup truck, you would put something in the bed, mm -hmm. and it'll start rolling yep. around. Or then you have to have some sort of boxes, right? Yep. Or toolboxes, yep. and then you're you're going on and on and on. Exactly. This is the hitch cover, so we took the hitch cover off. So, because uh, we're going to be going to go towing some trailers. So, yep. but no spare tire. No spare tire. Are you worried much about it, or no? Well, I mean. When was the last time you had to change a spare on your truck? Uh, it's, it's been years. It's been for, a few years. It's the same for me. Yeah. It's like an insurance policy. <laughs> you do feel better having it. Um, but it's once, once again, I've owned Teslas, and so you're used to that, right? You, you don't have that tire. And so, you know, being so, a truck, though, it could change things. It but. could change things, yeah. But like I was thinking about it, I mean, knock on wood. There's no wood well, here. Right here. I got it. Uh, yeah, no, knock on wood. Like, if you're an observant driver, right, you could kind of take care of your vehicle and your tires. But that one day, <laughs> you're going to make a mistake, right? So you could bring a spare tire, I mean, in the bed somewhere, you, right? You definitely can. And I know Tesla sells it. But, you know, it's one of those things where when you have a truck, um, anytime you go towing, you're hauling, I mean, you should always be inspecting your tires, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, um, I do that. And so as, I think as long as I'm continuing to do that, should minimize my uh, issues. And how did it drive with the payload? Uh, you, you don't just, even feel it. Because you, you have so much power, right? Yeah. You have, a, what, dual motors, 600 horsepower potential? Yep, yep. yep. No, you don't, you don't feel it. Um, how about I, the trailer? The trailer, the, so the trailer was interesting. It, you feel the weight back there, but it handles it, if that makes sense. You know? Uh, was there a little bit of sway or like acceleration? You can feel acceleration? Yeah, I think slow? just initially when I, when I hitched up and I took off for the first time, you could feel that weight. Uh -huh. You know, you feel it. My Ram, you know, 3500, I don't feel it at all. I just go. How heavy is the trailer, approximately? 7,000 pounds. Okay. So it's not overly But it's a camping big. trailer. It's a camping yeah. trailer. So, it, you know, you have the wind resistance, the drag. You have all those um, potential issues, right? Um, when I was towing, we did get to a, a portion on the freeway that there was a lot of wind. Um, felt some gusts, but I think I'd feel that even in my 3,500. Yeah, but this is still not a very light vehicle. I mean, no. it weighs about, what, 6,700 pounds, just the way it sits. Yes, yes. So that's a good thing. Yes. Uh, for stability, right? Yes, and I think because of the batteries, you have that low center of gravity. And so that, to me, was the biggest, I would even say improvement over my 3,500, is the fact that you're anchored to the You feel highway. like yeah. more stable. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and also... I mean, it's hard to feel that, but also it's 50-50 weight distribution, almost 50-50, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if this was a race car, this would be really great, Yeah, but it's yeah, not. Yeah. Um, let's talk about a little bit, what do you think about the lack of door handles? Um, it doesn't bother me. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I will say this, and I, I, I want to continue you saying, you know, I want to use it as a truck. Well, sure. what happens? Your hands get dirty. Yes. And so I am being a little bit, you know, um, I'm trying to make sure that I don't get the truck too dirty, even though I'm saying I don't mind getting it yeah, dirty. Yeah. So when I have dirty hands, you know, touching it here, I, even though this is just rubber and all yeah. that, it, but I think about it. It's something that I think about that, oh, I got dirty hands and I'm having to touch. The but this is really the only place to grab it. That's here, the only place. There's kind of a, I don't know, an edge to this door yep. and this is the only place to grab it. Yep. That's it. That's interesting. Uh, like, for example, a Maki Mustang, a Ford Mustang Maki, has, has a little tab uh, on the rear and has like a little tab here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't put it. Maybe just simplicity of production, probably. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? But you haven't had any issues with like opening windows or doors or anything like that. No. Okay. Not at all. And this is rated for 2,500 pounds, like we were saying. You did a full payload test. Yes. And the suspension is air suspension. Yes. How does that feel on the road? It's oh, pretty, it's, pretty it's, nice. it's a dream. You uh -huh. know, especially, once again, referencing my RAM, but that thing I'm bouncing around, right? I mean, that's, 
what happens when you're driving a truck. I'm used to it. Yeah. But so, but when I'm driving this, I'm in a truck, but it's driving like the like S, a car, and it's yeah. That's 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 really nice. So it combines that kind of a car driving feel with a bigger vehicle and, like this is. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Okay. Well, let's jump in because I want to ask you a lot about like the interior of this. Okay. Because there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on. All right, let's jump in. Okay. So you were one of the early reservation holders. Yes. Right. And then Tesla asked you, you know, if you wanted the foundation series. Yes. So we're, this is basically a foundation series. You can see a little logo reminding us, by the way, what happened when they put film on this? Um, Cause the foundation kind of logos were stamped, not stamped, but like polished into the metal, right? Yeah, it was, I believe it's engraved into it um uh -huh. but or la laser etched i think yeah. is what they say um yeah they covered it up i'm actually the tin shop is actually gonna and the wrap shop they're gonna do something uh different you know a lot of people are just um making vinyl replicas of the foundation series and just putting it over the wraps what they want to do is m make a few different foundation series vinyl um, decals uh -huh. and layer them put them underneath the wrap so now it, it's like an embossing uh -huh. and so that's something that i need to go back and have them do but um but i was a little surprised looking at the truck the way it's wrapped right now yes. it looks great but i thought i would see the indentation of where the letters were no but there's no, no indentation there's it's completely yeah, flat it, there's nothing um all right so it's part of the foundation series right yes. it's twenty thousand dollars more than an eighty thousand dollar ish starting price mm -hmm. of the all wheel drive yep. dual motor, and for that money, you're supposed to be getting a lot, right? Yes, you're supposed to get full self driving, which isn't available yet. Uh, you get a lot of the little accessories. You get the rubber floor mats. Uh, you get the what about, like the light bar, the off road light bar. So that or... is only available on the Cyber Beast. Oh yeah, the tri motor. Yes, yes, that's only okay. available on that one now once they start selling it i i'll probably throw that on here just to complete okay. that tough look uh-huh okay so what do you think i mean you've owned teslas before but yeah. this this looks familiar yes if, if you're used to a tesla yes it's it, i like it 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 feels it's very comfortable um i wish the seats i, th I think you and i were talking about it the yeah. seats are just I'm used the to bottom cushion. Yeah, I'm used to having the seats up a little bit more. I, you know, you and I are around the same height, yeah. so you know, maybe for someone that's smaller than us, this is perfect. But for me, I wish it was just a little bit more. Um, it's just a little higher on my thigh. Um, comfortable. You know, I've driven Teslas with the yoke. Uh -huh. I hate the yoke. I, 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 I do not like it. Some people do. I, I don't. But the fact that they added this piece up at the top, because this is how I drive. Mm -hmm. I'm either like this or I'm like this. And mainly in this position and having this little section right here is just really, really, really nice and comfortable for me. So I'm loving the steering wheel. Okay. So you don't mind that it's not a circle? No, I okay. do not mind at all. Because it's kind of a rectangular squircle. Yes. Uh, kind of a shape. Yes. What about blinker? operation and maybe even the uh, you know drive and park operation what do you think about that all of that was a learning curve right as far as just getting used to that muscle memory i'm i'm used to the stocks yeah so your hand is going up so there. i'm doing this initially now though i've noticed you know just driving it for a few days i got used to the buttons you know to where i'm not even thinking about it now um this you know putting it in gear can you show that really quick? Yeah. Just, there it is. So you just swipe up to go into drive. You tap it to go into park. And then you swipe down to put it in reverse. So they're basically a little slider on the digital screen. Yes. And um, first of all, for me to go up to go drive, you know, it's like reverse yeah. psychology. Yeah. I'm like, am I going in the reverse? 
or am I going forward? Now I'm thinking, okay, so I am going forward, right? Yes. What do you think about all that? Well, I, I, I've done that. I've done that where I put it into drive when I'm trying to go into reverse. Okay. You know, um, don't take off, but I usually how I know is because the screen comes up if I'm, you know, if I'm in reverse, it, it'll see show me you. this and yeah. I go, okay, and I'm in reverse. And if you're, you know, in drive, it's showing in front of you because the front camera. So then I, okay, I'm not where I need to be. But um, for a truck, I, I want the... Like a physical... Yeah, I want that. I, I, I agree with that because also, like you said, what if your hands are dirty? Yeah. What if you were working on your trailer and you come in here and... Yeah, so that's kind of... And also they put like a replica up here. They did. Which is also odd. And and once again, like you just said, if you're doing truck stuff and your hands are dirty, muddy, oil, grease, do you want to be touching all that? You know? This mirror, this center rear view mirror is looks tiny it's cute <laughs> at first but so some people complain and they said this looks cheap uh, it doesn't really look cheap it just looks small would it, you agree yes I, I don't think it's necessarily cheap it's just i'm not used to that in in a truck when i get in a truck uh, this is something that my wife would pull out of her purse yeah you know and do her makeup with so this is just um just smaller than I would want it to be. But I think they're just relying on the camera system, right? So. Yeah, which is, of course, it's great that while it's working. Um, and if the screen is down for some reason, mm -hmm. that becomes a problem, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, have you had any problems with this truck? I mean, like any glitches or whatever? Um, so far? No, no, no glitches. Um, I think everything that I would view as a negative is just personal preference. Um, but as far as software system, uh, no issues so far. Um, yeah, no, nothing so far. What about, what about, um, well, first of all, it has really interesting kind of sun visors. Yes. Right. Yep. They do move around. You can kind of put it on your side, I guess you could put, they're kind of magnet operated. Mm -hmm. Like Model X has had something similar. Yes. Um, and But you're telling me this light is... I don't know how to turn this light on. So there's a light above the passenger, front passenger and driver. There's kind of a bar. Yes. But you said you've never been able to turn it on. I don't, so, I don't know what, so, what you're supposed to do. Do you press it? Do you... And do you control it here? There's so, lights in here. I mean, the dome lights are... You would think that would turn it on. Turns so on the, the lights in the back. Yeah, so the rear lights come on when you turn on the dome lights, but but this, not the front one. No, and then I have a mirror lighting issue with this one. Doesn't turn on. I mean, that's all stuff that they can fix, right? But you wouldn't expect that. Um, do I have a mirror here? Yes. Oh yeah, I do. Oh, my light works. Yeah, it likes you. Oh wow. Okay, that's interesting. Um, well, that's kind of small things, I guess. It's small things. Um, if we're nitpicking, those are things. But, I mean, that's all stuff that can get fixed. Or, yeah, you know, maybe I just don't know what I'm doing with that light. Of course, when you're buying a brand new vehicle, especially if it's $100,000, you would expect absolutely no issues. Exactly. But we're living in a new world. I mean, mm -hmm. I recently purchased a Chevy Colorado. I had a couple of software glitches on that truck. I mean... <laughs> when you're going computer, that's kind of what you run into, right? Yeah. So software becomes more up front right more prevalent yes. and there could be problems with it exactly so. interesting um let's go through some of these some of these controls because at first when i got in it i was overwhelmed what about you well it, yes i agree when i was at the delivery when i was taking delivery of the truck um you know they asked if i've ever had teslas or you know am i familiar with it I said, yes, but when I got in the truck and I started messing with it, there's a lot going on. Um, I guess that's okay. And once I get fully used to it, it it's fine. But uh, there is a lot going on in, in, this, in these controls. So you can control your mirrors. You could fold them. You can adjust them, right? Yep. Um, then you can control your steering wheel, you know, telescope, or you can move it up. You can move it down. So, and you kind of set your profile the way you like it, right? Yes. 
um, car wash mode. So this is kind of interesting, right? A lot of new electric vehicles have this because mm -hmm. some car washes grab a hold of your tire, right? And then they roll you forward. Yep. Um, so there's kind of a neutral um, setting mm -hmm. uh, for kind of free rolling. Tonneau cover, right height. Um, I kind of like where... How do Can we go to the home screen? Right I love this. Yes. So right now we're in the home screen and I can kind of, it's a three dimensional representation of the truck and it's also correct, functionally correct. Yes. So if the tonneau cover is open, like it is now, it shows it open. Yep. And when the window is down, like my window is down, it shows the window is down. Yes. What do you think about like some of this, these features? No, this, this is, uh, this is cool. It's cool. I like it. Um, it's fun to play around with it and it makes it very easy and accessible. You know, you're able to get to exactly what you need to get to uh, fairly quickly. That's interesting. So we, um, seat belt warning, that's pretty cool. So it has sensors. It looks like an all five positions. Yes. So it will only remind you about seat belts. Um, you don't have small kids. You don't have like car seats or anything? I don't. Okay. No. But I'm sure they have a provision for that as well. Um, um, yeah, no, there's all the hooks and everything's back there. Yeah. How's the stereo? Have you played music? Stereo is amazing. It is? It is really nice. Yes. Sweet. Yeah. Um, what about, like, driving on the highway and, like, road noise? Have you tried looking at that? Yeah, so what I did was my brother has a Silverado. Okay. And we were driving in that. Now, I was using a digital um, decibel reader. So I'm not sure exactly how accurate that's going to be, but it's going to, if it's not calibrated, it's not calibrated. So whatever reading I get on his is going to, you know, I can yeah. translate that, right? I believe his was at like 67 decibels and this was like 66. Okay. So, so it was similar. Similar. Almost the same. Similar. It wasn't, okay. it wasn't a big difference. Because that's what people are usually worried about with electric vehicles, right? Because you're losing the sound of the engine. Mm-hmm which could mask a lot of other sounds mm -hmm. right around the truck. But a lot of the new manufacturers, including like the F-150 Lightning that uh, we own, the TFL, those are becoming very quiet vehicles. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty pleasant. Yep. Um, what about the efficiency and charging? Let's discuss that a little bit more. Okay. What, so did you run a full charge already on this? I got it you down. Didn't... Yeah, I got it down to about thirty percent. Okay. Um, so I didn't get it all the way down, but I got it to about thirty percent, and I think it took about five and a half, six hours to to get it back up. And this um, is at home charging. At home. Okay. Yes. Um, supercharger. I think when we did the tow video, uh, I got it down to ninety four miles was left on the vehicle, and I fully charged it to three seventeen. And it took maybe an hour and 15 minutes. Eric, I want to go to a website that everybody should go to. Okay. <laughs> it's tfltruck.com. Yes. We do have a browser in here, so I'm just kind of kidding around. But this is pretty cool. Some manufacturers are now getting, starting to get this yes. again as well. Um, but once again, like moving your truck around. Mm-hmm. I don't know why other manufacturers haven't done that before. I mean, everybody has screens, right? Mm -hmm. um, having, at least while stationary, a lot of other features, like maybe even games or browsing, websites or looking up things. Uh, yeah, it's, it's technology, right? And it's, it's where uh, the industry should be going, and I think it is going, and I don't think... Um, it's overly difficult to, to do these things. So that, is, that what, is that what you meant when you said you like the technology? Yes. And this is, is combining yes. the technology with yes. truck, right? Yes, yep. Yeah, because I mean, my RAM, I have that big screen in the middle, but yeah. I don't have a browser. I don't have, you know, certain features, games and things like that. Yeah. You know, the ability to watch Netflix or YouTube, um, you know, when you're stationary, you know, Listen, I, listening to your favorite podcast. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I hear you. How about like what Tesla promised for over four years ago versus the truck? Mm -hmm. um, like you talked about the look grew on you. Mm -hmm. What 
Were you disappointed by some something else? Y- yes, yes. Uh, I was disappointed with the towing ability, the payload, and the range. Those were huge. Well, those are big promises yes, right, yes. that they made. Yep, yep. The towing 14,000 pounds, I would have liked them to have kept that promise. Um, the payload, it was supposed to be, I believe, 3,500 pounds. I wish, they would, I wish they would have kept that promise. And the range at 500 miles, that was a really big thing for me. Um, the 11,000 pounds and the 30 and the 2,500 pounds are fine, uh-huh. uh, payload and towing, but the range, I, I really wish they would have kept that range. And you're doing a big trip coming up Yes. this coming weekend. Yeah. Uh, how, how long is that round, trip going to be? Round trip, a little bit over 900 miles. Okay. So having that extra range would really help. Yeah, definitely. But you do have the Tesla network behind and, you. And, and they so. are the best network. How about here in the SoCal area, Southern California? Is there, do you notice like lines or how does that work? Do you go to a lot of uh, superchargers? I, I don't do a lot of supercharging locally, but I, like I said, I we, we travel a lot. We, we have family up north. We go to San Diego a lot. So we do go to superchargers. Um, just and not in Not where necessarily you live. right here. Yeah, yeah. Just, just where you live. Um, and no, I mean, there's, Usually there's no lines. Um, I think there's enough now to kind of accommodate everybody. And you also learn which ones you are, you know, busier than others. So uh, no issues there for me. I also So you have wireless charging yep. here in the center console. Yep. But originally they showed this as a seat. Yes. Uh, when they originally, like four years ago. But it's not a seat, is it? No, it is not. And is it, a seat would have been nice. Is it removable? I don't think so. Maybe not easily. Yeah, probably not easily. But the floor is really deep. So you could put like almost a carry-on bag down here or something. Well, you know, now with the YouTube channel, I always have a backpack with me. Okay. And so I keep my backpack in there and I kind of tuck it down underneath. So between, uh, in the front here. Yep. And it works really well for that. I'm sure my wife will use it for her purse. How about your center console? How deep is this? It gets, I mean, it's, it's a good space. It's, you know, it's not as... But it's not huge. It's not no, like your RAM. No, it's definitely not like my... I was just going to say, it's definitely not like my RAM. It's serviceable. Yeah. You know. All right, well, let's get in the back seat because I want to... There's a back screen here as well, so let's check that out. Okay. So first I noticed... You can lift the seat cushion, right? But you have to pull a little tab. Yes. Yep. I'm in love, not in love with that because some trucks you could just pull. Yeah. Well, that's how my RAM is. You yeah. just grab the bottom of the seat and just flip it up. So here you have a flat, mostly flat floor. Uh, you have um, this, is this, this is Tesla mat, right? Yes. This is what they give you as part of the foundation. Okay. But also, like, in your Ram and some other trucks, you have a little partition, yeah. right? Yep. But do you, are you aware, are, are they going to introduce a partition under the, the They receipt? have on their website um, cubbies that kind of go in here. Okay. It's just one large piece from what it looks like, and it just slides right in, and it gives you um, storage space. Yeah. If um, We're still waiting for our Cybertruck, so we also have an order for one, but... I would add that in because that's what I'm used to, like extra straps yep. or some other items. Yeah, because I'm not I'm not too worried or interested in using this for storage. I mean, anytime I'm traveling, camping, tra- you know, towing with the trailer, my kids are here. So having the storage underneath is probably more useful for me. Um, but I can see why some people would like this and utilize it. Well, you also have the frunk in this case, yes. right? So you have some extra space. Exactly. Um, I wanted to um, try to operate this screen or look, look at the center screen. I don't know if we could see it. Um, so this is, what is it, like a nine inch display? Uh, yes, I believe it's Ish. a 9.2. Oh, so we have rear seat heat. Yes, on the two, we, not uh, the middle. Not the middle. Yep. Um, and then multiple levels. You could also move the front seat. Yeah, to give yourself some extra leg room. 
Are you going to let your kids do that? <laughs> <laughs> Not when I'm in the passenger seat. <laughs> or your wife yeah. or somebody. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. But it's kind of cool, like, for ride share. Yes. Like, if you're using, um, if somebody gets back in here and the, they can actually move the seat and have quite a bit of space. Actually, this seat is a little bit more comfortable than this. Passenger. Yeah, it's it's not it's not bad back here. Yeah. But I think it's because these, once again, for us, I think these sit up a little, a little, a little bit, bit higher. higher. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I think it just depends on how you are. And then you have, or you're supposed to have games down here, that right? You're supposed to have games, yes. Not yet. Not yet. But Hulu, Netflix, YouTube, you have a, kind of a lot of controls here. Uh, fan, of course, like climate control system. You have vents. Mm -hmm. Also have this um, Huge. clear roof. Yeah. Huge roof. Basically panoramic roof. Yes. Is that a speaker? I, I believe well there's fi maybe. there's 15 speakers 15 speakers so, so that kind of hidden that, that could be a speaker it looks like a speaker to me and you said you really enjoyed the stereo system, the stereo is really nice yes um, but there's no entry into the bed here so it's not like a yeah. like Silverado EV is gonna have like a little mid gate here yeah that would have been nice there's that glass been, that would have been uh, something that they could have probably like added. next level yeah but the tunnel cover lives there because the tunnel cover folds down. Yeah, but I'm, you know, I don't know. I think they could have probably made it work. But what do I know? <laughs> we're, we're just truck drivers, right? Yeah. We're not truck who designers. Yeah, who am I? There's a little logo on the, um, on the floor mat. Little cyber truck logo is in, the, in the, is in the center there. And I believe this seat right now is in um, entry. Which which is all the way pu back pushes all the way back and I mean, and you're pretty comfy. Yeah, I mean I can, if I had to, I can do this. So let's let's get outside and kind of wrap up this this podcast okay. episode. Um, I wanted to ask you. So overall, what are your thoughts? Um, positive? You love it? You don't like it? Do you want to sell it? <laughs> I don't want to sell it. Okay. Um, I, I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it. Uh, I think this weekend's going to be a good, nice test for us. I mean, it doesn't even have 400 miles yet, so I'm going to, you know, more than double that. And, um, but I'm enjoying it. I love it. And I'm excited to, to do more with it. So also, you said also off camera uh, to me, this is an attention-grabbing vehicle still. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it, you can't go anywhere, as you will find out. You can't go anywhere without someone giving you a thumbs up, taking pictures, videotaping. I had a guy get out of his vehicle, go up on the road, on the side of the road, and was videotaping me as I drove past him. Uh-huh. You know, it's just, it's one of those vehicles that you're getting attention. I've, I've been so, stopped and asked if I'm filming a movie. You know? So if you don't like attention, this is probably not a vehicle that you should buy. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> At least that. right now for I the agree. next like year or so. No, you should not. So actually for me, it was interesting because we also, in our test fleet at TFL truck, we own the GMC Hummer EV. It was kind of similar well, maybe not as crazy as the Cybertruck attention, yeah. Yeah. but people turn, they look, they ask questions about it. Then we had an F-150 Lightning EV. Nobody looked at it. <laughs> you could drive the Lightning down the street, on the campground, at the lake. Everybody thought it's just an F-150. It just looks like an F-150. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what they wanted, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is a whole nother level, a whole nother thing. This is thing. definitely... Uh look at me type of vehicle all right well i really appreciate it thank you for your no, time no problem thank uh, you, Andre. hopefully this was interesting to you guys because this is kind of like an owner's perspective right um real world uh information about the truck and i know you'll be doing more testing we'll be doing some more testing as well yeah. um, so i really appreciate it um, we'll see you next time check us out at altfl.com also check out eric's stuff at butter underscore ev yes Yep. So really appreciate it, guys. Thank you.